on this episode, effort and why. If water sensitive urban design is going to continue to grow and develop, we need more of it. Hey everyone, and welcome back to ID Anthro. And welcome back to another That's Like Wusset episode, where we take a concept or an idea that we've heard about in a book or read online or in a podcast and go, okay, how does that relate to water sensitive urban design? And today, we're going to be looking at this equation, which is from Angela Duckworth's book, Grit. Now, in a nutshell, grit is about the character traits, the personality traits that lead to people being successful. And Angela presents the concept of, of grit is her way at looking at that. But within the book, she presents this particular formula as a formula to how to get to achievement, how to get things done in life. And that reminded me when I first read about this or heard this, it reminded me of something that I'd observed in water sensitive urban design. And we're going to dig into that today. Now for this to make sense, the first thing you need to understand how I think about water sensitive urban design is I think, of, I think about it as something that is definitely still evolving. I know that in many respects our practice has kind of narrowed into over recent years, oh, bioretention equals water sensitive urban design. But when I look at this, I go, okay, we are on a journey of trying to manage the water and the stormwater in our cities in a way that's truly sustainable. And we went from not being doing much on that water sensitive approach. We've introduced some things into mainstream practice now, like bioretention, like stormwater treatment. But honestly, we're nowhere near the finish line here, right? This has to go a lot further. And so we are on a journey towards that. So you need to keep that in the back of your mind as we're exploring this. And for that journey to work, there is a lot of stuff that we just simply do not know how to do, do not know how to make it work yet. And we need to be learning that. So let's talk about what this formula means. This formula essentially means that there are two parts to getting from being a person who's interested in a topic to getting through to achieving something in that topic. So the first, first part of the formula is talent times effort equals skill. So what this is really saying is that anyone out there can have a, num like can have a whole heap of fundamental underlying physical and mental and character traits that they can develop over time. But those, and if those are developed, they turn into skills. But they only develop when you put in dedicated, deliberate effort into those. So to take an analogy here, imagine a football player, and by football I mean like rugby league sort of player here. There are some, if someone's going to be good at rugby league, there are some underlying physical traits they're probably going to have. They're probably going to be um, pretty big, they're going to be pretty strong. They're also going to be relatively quick, uh, relatively nimble, relatively robust. And then if they put lots of effort in, if they train really hard, they can develop the skills that you need for rugby league, which for example is the skills of how you tackle someone, how you kick the ball, how you maybe run towards someone who's trying to tackle you for the best chance of not getting tackled, and so on. So they take their underlying under, fundamental underlying physical skills, apply effort and training to them, or fundamental underlying talent, apply effort and training to them, and they develop skills. But that doesn't make, you know, there are plenty of talented football players out there that doesn't make all of them successful or mean that they all achieve and win premierships, right? There's a second part to that. You then need to take that skill and apply it through more effort in whatever your field is. In the case of a footy player, that's on the football field, and then you achieve. So if you're, uh, if you're Jonathan Thurston in the NRL, sorry, really Australian example there, you then take your immense skills that you've developed over years of effort, take those skills, you apply more effort on the football field and then you achieve. And this is the formula that Angela Duckworth presents in Grit. And I think it's eminently a very, very sensible formula. Maybe it doesn't tell you the be all and end all of everything. That's why there's a whole book about this concept of grit, but an eminently very useful formula. Now what this got me thinking about in water sense of urban design is I've observed, I've observed this in myself, but also in some other people that I've seen, that when we enter the industry, so imagine that you're a young graduate, you come out of university and you're really, really enthusiastic. You've got some base talent and some base skills because you've been taught stuff at uni. So you have the potential to know lots and apply lots of knowledge. You've gone through uni where you've applied some effort and developed some skills and you come into the industry. And I noticed that a lot of young graduates initially get given a relatively narrow focus of work 
and a fair bit of time to do it. And of course, what that allows them to do is they have plenty of time to put in effort into developing the skill in that space, which is sweet. So they put in the effort and they develop the skill and they get the skill. And then at that point, they still have a fair bit of time to put in lots of effort and get pretty good outcomes from it. I've seen this play out a number of times. In fact, I've seen this play out really, really well when a young graduate comes out, they've got talent, they've got some skills from uni, and they're given a really, like, really early on in their career, given a relatively tightly focused, but very, very ambitious project. Something that really stretches them, but stretches them because it's deep and it's a big project and it's an important project. Not because they're scattered across 17 different projects. One project, really deep. And they have to apply huge amounts of effort to make that work for them. They develop heaps of skill in the process, and through that effort, they achieve really, really well. And it's a really good kickstart to their career. I've got someone particular in mind when I'm, uh, when I'm thinking about this here. But then something I've noticed happens is people are in the workplace and little bits of, you know, they're seen to do really well and to achieve really well. And suddenly other little bits of things come in from the side. Oh, can you do a bit of this? Can you do a bit of that? And then suddenly like two years later, this person who has heaps of skills and heaps of potential is suddenly completely overwhelmed with like 16 different jobs that they're all trying to do. And they no longer have the time to apply the effort to go really deep on any of them. And suddenly the ability to keep learning and keep developing evaporates because effort is the fundamental factor that we have control of here, right? Effort's the thing that gets applied twice in this formula to go really well. So suddenly you see people and they're no longer new graduates because they're into their careers. So this applies to all of us. I've seen this happen to me. Suddenly stretched in a million, you know, a million different directions, all of which they're moderately good at, but no longer have the time to develop further. And this is a problem in water sensitive urban design because if we come back to the concept that water sensitive urban design is continuing to develop, suddenly we have a situation where the person is very good, and I fall into this trap, decent at what the current status, the status quo for water sensitive urban design is. But if we want water sensitive urban design to work, it needs to evolve, which means that us as practitioners need to apply more effort in developing more skill than more effort in applying that skill. Can you see the catch 22 here? Can you see the problem? We've got so good at doing what we currently do and have so much of what we currently do to do that we don't have the time to actually put in the effort to figure out what's next. And what's next absolutely has to happen if water sensitive urban design is going to work. The current status quo of the willy nilly without thinking about it, building heaps of bioretention systems, blah, 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 is fine for what we've got to to date, but it's not fine if we keep doing that for another 10 years because it's not where we need to be. We need to evolve. And that evolution requires us to look at the latest research that's appearing about what streams need about stream health. It needs us to try and develop new stormwater treatment technologies, new stormwater treatment approaches. And all of that requires effort to go really deep on the problem, to really think it out, to really work on it. And that is what this formula reminded me of with respect to water sensitive urban design. I'm really interested to hear what you think about this. Does this make sense? Have you had, so a few questions. Have you had that experience that I had where you watch new graduates come out of uni, they have a chance to go really deep, they learn really quickly, and then we all get to this point somewhere in our career where we're kind of treading water a little bit more? Have you experienced that? I certainly have. I'm now trying, not entirely successfully, but trying to apply lots more of this effort in order to, to improve. What do you think? Does this formula make sense? I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a comment. Leave me a comment below in YouTube, a comment in Facebook. I'd love to hear what you think. But for now, that's it. That's another episode of That's Life Wussard. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.